Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I thought I would attempt to learn a new skill. In 2023, I want to kind of build upon the things that I already know how to do and continue to push the tools that I have available at my disposal. So today, I am attempting to learn how to screen print and a bunch of other random things that I fell down a rabbit hole doing once I learned how to screen print. Let's get to build. This video idea started out as me just trying out the screen printing kit from Speedball, but quickly got a lot more complicated with other methods. My wife's grandmother got me this as a birthday present last year, and it's been one of those things that I've been a little intimidated to try and tackle. So thank you, Nancy, for the awesome gift. Time to put it to use. There are several different levels of entry into screen printing, and this kit is an intermediate level. It includes chemicals, equipment, and step-by-step -step instructions for three different methods. There is the stencil instructions, as well as the drawing fluid slash screen filler method, and also photo emulsion. I read the basics for all of them and decided that I would be trying the drawing fluid method. All the instructions said to tape off the seams of the screen to prevent paint from gathering in the crevices and also create a two inch border on all the sides of the pattern to spread ink across later. This is just basic painter's tape I'm using here. I'm gonna hand paint my logo on and to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna use this printout to kinda trace it. So that my screen is not sitting directly on the surface of the paper and bleeding all over, I taped on some foam boards to act as a spacer. The drawing fluid is like thin paint that will act as a barrier for the screen filler. Resist the urge to shake the bottle to mix it. Do it with a stir stick so you don't introduce bubbles or have lumps of stuff left in there that could lead to problems with your screen. You paint this onto your screen in all the areas you want the ink to go. Slowly I work my way around the design trying to get solid coverage but not over saturation. Then I set it aside for an hour or so to dry. With the drawing fluid, it's now time to flood the remaining parts of the screen with red filler. This stuff will clog up everything left over on the screen and act as a blocker so that ink cannot pass through it. Now the instructions say to do this in one pass, but as it is my first time and I grossly underestimated the amount that I needed, I had to make a couple of passes, which I guess will be okay, we'll, we'll see. You just want to make sure that you cover all the threads. I should have left my spacers on for this step also so because I noticed that it touched the table and I didn't get a solid coverage in some areas. I had to go back and patch it up with a brush a little bit later. After done, give it an hour or two to let it dry up so that you can move on to the next step.
The next step is to rinse off the drawing fluid. What's nice about the speedball kit is that it's all non-toxic chemicals and can be safely washed down the drain with water. So with a quick rinse, the blue drawing fluid dissolves and exposed screen is left for the ink to pass through. I let the screen dry and get ready for my first pull. The first thing you're probably going to notice, other than a shirt being stretched over a piece of cardboard, is that I am placing my setup sideways. The squeegee fits best long ways, and it's supposedly much easier to pull towards you with even pressure than it is to swipe sideways with even pressure. Plus, I'm trying to get this all in frame, and this is an extra large t-shirt. I went to the dollar store and got a bunch of different sizes and colored shirts, which had a price range from three to seven dollars. I positioned my screen on on the shirt, plop down some ink on the border, and pull the ink across my shirt. I tried a test run on a cheap tote bag and it was real splotchy, so I'm extra cautious and probably make more passes than I need to. In my search for how to do screen printing, I stumbled upon a few people who showed a cheaper alternative than the speedball kits, which can range from $40 to $130. I got this embroidery hoop for $2, a yard of discounted sheer fabric for $3, and some PVA glue for $0.50, cents. so that's less than $6 for this method. It is the same basic concept as the previous one, but instead of the drawing fluid, I'm using a sharpie to mark off my design. I didn't think about this until cleanup, but school glue is water soluble, so when you go to wash off the excess ink out of your screen, it's going to dissolve the design. If I did it again, I'd probably try Mod Podge or something that's not going to rinse out easily. I did not have a small enough squeegee to fit in this little hoop, so I just pulled an expired gift card out of my wallet and used it to scrape across the screen. Yes, I have tons of expired things that I just need to get rid of, and here's an excuse to do so. You can buy the screen printing ink in small containers for like five to ten dollars, depending on the size. Since I got it with the kit, I've already got the ink.
Another common method for putting images or patterns onto shirts is just to make a stencil. The method requires that I alter my logo a little bit so that all the parts hold together. I just added some little tabs all over and changed the font to a stencil lettering. You could definitely cut this out by hand, but since I have a laser cutter, I'm gonna save an hour or two and let it burn out the design in four minutes. I cut out two of these because I wanted to try two different stencil methods. Of course, let's make this more complicated. My first stencil method I wanted to try was bleaching. I placed down my design and try to block off the rest of the shirt with cardboard. Notice I said try. You'll see the overspray here in a second when I lift up the design. I'm just using some cleaner that has bleach in it, so that kind of means that it's a little diluted than the regular straight up bleach. So I kind of have some control over the intensity and design and can work a little bit slower. The stencil will concentrate the liquid into the areas that I want. The edges are not not perfect, but I kind of have the idea that I'm going to go back over the main parts of my logo with pure bleach to make a color variation on the pattern. To stop the bleaching process, you simply submerge the bleached areas in water with a little hydrogen peroxide. They say about one part to nine parts water, so make your solution 10% hydrogen peroxide. The areas will fizz and you'll see water turn brown when you dunk it in. This means it's working. Once dipped for a few minutes, I went to the sink, rinsed off my shirt in running water, and then went ahead and washed it with laundry detergent. My other stencil method is to just dab on the screen printing ink. I took a cheap sponge brush, cut out that annoying little plastic bit that's in the middle and folded it over, then taped it down. Then I simply dabbed on the ink. Yet another method for an alternative to screen printing is to do heat transfer vinyl. I have a Cricut that you've seen in a number of builds here in the past, and it has its own program that you can go in and make designs on. The only real important thing to note is that the image needs to be mirrored or inverted. When you cut the material, the adhesive side is up, so you end up flipping the material in the opposite direction when you're ironing it on. You can also use a regular 
leather vinyl cut out and stuck onto the screen printed screen to make a stencil also. Basically all these methods you can kind of mix and match to fit your purpose whether you have access to the tools, materials, or programs. Once your vinyl cutter has done its job, it's time to weed the sheet. Weeding is where you remove all the parts you don't want to keep for the iron-on. I have this nice little pick that makes easy work of it. When you're finished, all that is left is the vinyl and the backing film. For vinyl heat transfer, the last step is to position it onto your garment and apply a heat source to the back. I like to put parchment paper down to protect my iron, put relatively even pressure down and move it all around as the iron doesn't heat up perfectly all the way across, at least mine doesn't. When it's down, you can easily peel back the film and make one more pass with the iron and parchment paper for good measure. My iron doesn't heat very evenly and it's kind of small for most applications, so I may have made another small purchase for this build. I bought myself one of those Cricut heat presses, which is basically just a bigger iron with a timer and a much more evenly heated large surface. I got the 12 inch by 9 inch one, I think. Um, the biggest one that they have. All of my screen printed shirts were left to dry for about two days and now I need to heat set the ink before I wash them so that they don't kind of just fade off after a couple. The recommended temp for this speedball ink is 320 degrees for 40 seconds. I have a lot more precision with the controls on this new machine and I can heat things up in a fraction of the time compared to the iron. There are a lot of other ways to heat set your ink. You could carefully heat it with a heat gun and oven apparently is another suggestion that people have said or if you're fancy you can get a screen printing conveyor tunnel dryer they're only around two thousand bucks and up depending on the model and we are finished here is the end result of all of the random ways in which I learned how to do this. Uh, not only screen printing with a kit, but also kind of doing the cheap and easy way with some glue and a uh, loop, a loom, yeah. Uh, vinyl cutting, I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of have a gist of how to do it. And thanks to the new Cricut iron thingy that I got, it's a lot easier just because it's a bigger surface. I've never tried bleaching something before, but I thought that turned out pretty cool and definitely something that I could see using to make other merch with. But yeah, maybe you will try and make something using a material that you're not familiar with or a process you're not familiar with and find out that it's not as easy as it, or not as hard as it seemed to be. It is easy. Er.
Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. I think my favorite is this, uh, this hoodie. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and would like to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.